So we look now at getting uh, level seven in AF1. So here we're at the top end and the best thing I can say about this is if you have six firm, if you have level six firm, if you've got us what we discussed in level six, then you're gonna move into seven quite comfortably because level seven is basically just an extension of what you did in six. Whereas six from five involved some new skills and five from four involved some new skills. Uh, let's say one to three is kind of developmental then four is a bit of a break, five is a bit of a break, six is a bit of a break. And then from six onwards, it's like you've got the trajectory now you just have to hone and refine, hone and refine, hone and refine. And you see that actually, if we just scroll back up just to see the ones for level six. So level six, imagine the treatment appropriate materials, familiarity with conventions, variety of forms. And if we come down here, imaginative and generally successful adaptation of a wide range of forms and conventions to suit purpose and audience. So what you're really doing there is here, you've got the last part, it said not always successful. Whereas basically in level seven, you are being uh, successful and that's the main difference so as you try and do it you're getting it right rather than getting it you're getting most of it right rather than getting some of it um, some of it right so basically what we're looking at you being able to do is change the conventions and the elements as needed so this is all about control this is why the English teachers will tell you time and time again you need to read because you'll only be able to pick up on the conventions and know what the conventions are from having read lots of different types of writing and understand how writers that are published, etc., or paid at least, they are um, using the conventions, etc., and how, what you can expect to see from them, and then you'll know what to do. So you'll know how a twist ending, you know, has to be set up. You'll know how a sarcastic piece has to sound. You'll know how a brochure needs to be laid out, etc., 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 and uh, you'll mix and match forms as needed to do that. Now you can see why it's quite hard, and why probably why not many people try and actually elaborate upon all these is because when you're talking about all different types of writing, it becomes you know you just incorporating so much so really by the time you get to level seven it's almost like a language in and of itself you either understand what this means or you won't and if you don't um, then I'd go back to the five and six videos just keep firming them up firming them up firming them up because all you have to do here for 7.1 is just continue what you're doing for level six but just be more assured and make sure it can is sustained throughout the, the whole piece of work 7.2 then it's well judged distinctive individual voice or viewpoint uh, being established and sustained throughout so we pop back to six just to get a frame of reference for ourselves here we were looking at sounding assured and sounding like the person we wanted to sound like and in level seven we're doing the same thing and it's just the only addition really is we've got that it's well judged so well judged basically means for our purposes anyway that we at any given moment, whatever we put or whatever our characters say is actually coming across, depending on our piece of writing, is actually coming across in the tone that sounds just right for their purpose. So when they sound angry, they're angry. When they're happy, they're happy. When they're in love, when they're in love. Similarly, in letter, if we wanted to start off quite sarcastic, but then start to become more um, conciliatory or where we want to try and make a difference, again, it will just sound right. We won't sound sarcastic anymore or we won't sound too soft at the beginning. You have to have real um, language and ability to control to be able to do this. But, you know, that's why you, you, you're at school to, to learn English. So hopefully it comes, it will start to become natural to you and level seven now the situation uh, whatever the situation is and it remains so you now by level seven everything you do so now we're looking at cb for gcse or chb should i say for gcse this has to be consistent now so remember level seven we're looking at someone getting this at year because these are key stage three boundaries really so we're looking at someone getting this by 13 14 so if they can do this by then then really they should be on for an aa style by the time they get to gcse the difference that comes about isn't that much it's just that most people won't hit hit to this level maybe just when you're in key stage uh, four rather than key stage three you'll be doing it in more detail rather than um rather than just having glimpses of it which it which it was here so yeah it has to remain so you have to actually make it strong all the way through so 7.3 Generally successful and consistent control of appropriate level of formality and a varied range of stylistic devices to achieve the attended effect. Again, we'll pop back to six. So you can see it's literally just a development with a few more words of that. And what we were trying to do is just make sure that we were clear with our writing and why. 
And now the only thing we're adding, I, the only thing I can add to this is um, the varied range of stylistic devices. So I'm just going to use a Wikipedia page just to just to emphasize this. Um, really useful page, stylistic devices, just a list of them over here. So you've got the figurative language and you've got like sound techniques. Uh, you've got structural techniques, the use of irony and the use of register. So a, a mixture from those five, as appropriate, a mixture from those five elements. Um, and I'm sure there are more as well. There's a mixture from those five elements will actually allow us to have what we're looking for there a varied type because if you use just one like say if all of yours are figurative everything to do with how we're actually trying to see or imagine something then it's not as strong as if we actually add some uh, sound techniques so we actually get an idea of how we hear it and then how we plot it etc 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 and you can go through so try and depending on your type of writing mix and match those so normally even when I was teaching uh, before and I used to teach you a forest that probably had forest was seven or eight different things in there now you can see just by looking down this there's probably nearly 20 or 20 well, sorry nearly 20 or 30 in there so there's many different ways in which you can change it um, you won't just be able to look at it and go oh right oh I'm going to do situational irony you know you'd have to stop and really try and see an example of how it always done etc before you can replicate it but uh, it would be well worth doing because that's when your writing is really going to improve so again I emphasize it and even though I'm sure you've heard your English teacher say it a million times you're really just reading different types of writing uh, different types of writing all different types of writing from speeches to scripts to biographies to um, slogans everything just try and read as much as you can just to see how words are used and then play with them